you can explore more of your favourite CBB shows on BBC iPlayer. And something's coming my way. Oh. Hello, my friend. I'm Andy. Uh, sorry about earlier. I didn't mean to scare you. According to my gizmo, this is a rusty spotted cat. It's the smallest species of cat in the world. This one's almost fully grown and would still fit into the palm of my hand if I was normal size. Oh. Doesn't seem too sure about that stream, though. Hmm. Now, that doesn't look like a cat who spends a lot of time in water. Jen to Andy, have you found the cat? Yes. I'm not sure this is the cat we're looking for, Jen. He doesn't seem to want to get wet. Don't worry, Andy. I fixed the periscope and I'm looking at another cat who's in the water right now. Amazing. Well, where is it? In the wetlands just beyond the forest. The wetlands, of course! And I know exactly how to get there. Hurry, Andy. The storm will be here soon. I'll send the coordinates and get Scout to meet you there. Great. Thanks, Jen. See you later, my little furry friend. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Yes! I knew the stream would lead me to the wetlands. And it's led me straight to Jen's cat. Oh! <laughs> this is definitely the one we're looking for. They're called fishing cats, because their favourite food is fish. That's why they like the water so much. Apparently, they're so well adapted to water, they even have webbed feet. Hello, Andy. Scout! There you are. Look, we've done it. We found the cat. Positive outcome achieved. You can explore more of your favourite CBB shows on BBC iPlayer. <laughs> Orangutan located. Checking HQ records. Positive identification. These are the orangutans we are looking for. Calling Andy and Jen. I have located Bibi and Bias. Yeah. Oh. Great work, Scout. Are they okay? Data inconclusive. The female is feeding on termites. These little insects provide valuable protein in the orangutan's diet. However, the infant does not appear to enjoy this form of nourishment. Oh, well, I'm not surprised. Orangutans are usually vegetarians, but Bias needs to eat something too. Infant orangutans rely on their mums to look after them for seven years. It's longer than any other species, apart from us humans, of course. So mum is going to need to find him something to eat and quick. Female orangutan is moving higher. Oh, can you follow them, Scout? Negative. Emergency power depleted. I am stuck in the canopy, entering hibernation mode. Oh, dear. Now I'm going to have to rescue Scout, too. This mission isn't going very well. Excuse me. Coming through. Don't mind me. This volcanic island is supposed to be a hostile place to live, but these cockroaches seem to be choosing to come here. What are they all doing and where are they all going? Hmm. Let's see. According to my gizmo, at low tide, these marine isopods emerge from the shoreline to feed off the algae growing on the rocks. Never eaten it myself. Don't really fancy it. But this lot must really love it to come here. I wonder if the animal I'm looking for also came here to eat algae. Oh, well. Better keep searching. Oh, hello. Are you the animal I'm looking for? Well, you must be. There's no one else around here. Well, apart from the cockroaches, of course. Now, I can see you're a lizard, but what type of lizard are you? Let's see. Ah, you're a swollen-nosed, side-blotched lizard. Huh. Swollen-nosed. Check. Side-blotched. Blotches. Check. Lizard. 
And I already knew that about you. So what are you doing here? I was told that you were stranded and needed rescuing. Oh, oh, don't worry. They're only cockroaches. Hey, stay away from my lizard friend. I think you're scaring him. Oh, on second thoughts, I think you lot should be scared of it. The lizard isn't eating the algae, it's eating the cockroaches. I better tell Jen. Andy to Jen, Andy to Jen. Hi, Andy, have you found the animal that needs rescuing yet? Certainly have, Jen. Look, it's a. Oh, let me get this right. Uh, swollen nose, side blotched lizard. Oh, wow, it's quite a mouthful. I know. Uh, speaking of mouthful, it's got its mouth full of sea cockroaches. It can't get enough of them. So, is it stranded then? Does it need rescuing? I don't think so, Jen. If anything, I think it's choosing to be here. And who wouldn't when there's an all you can eat buffet of mini beasts coming your way every low tide? <laughs> oh! We found our missing grizzly bear and her cub. And they look like they're OK. Oh, I'm so relieved. Analyzing. Species confirmed. North American brown bear, also known as the grizzly bear. And just like the woodpecker and beetle we met earlier, the damage caused by the wildfire has provided a great source of food for the bears. Look, they're digging for grubs in the burnt logs and ash. Downloading facts file on grizzly bear. Grizzly bears are omnivores. Diet consists of insects, rodents, and mammals, as well as nuts, berries, fruits, leaves, and roots. I could stay here and watch them for hours, but we better hurry back to HQ to tell them the good news. OK, Jen. See you later, bears! You can explore more of your favourite CBB shows on BBC iPlayer. Now, what's he looking at? Ah, there's another one over there, and it seems to be munching on some freshly cut flowers. Oh, our one's off to take a look. They look tasty, those flowers, don't they? That one's really enjoying them. Oh. <coughs> Hello. I think my little friend here would like some of those tasty flowers. Is that OK? The two individuals do not appear to be friends, Andy. No, I think you're right, Scout. Hey, that, that wasn't very nice. Leave my friend alone. There's enough flowers here for everyone. It says here that hamsters will fight like this when trying to protect their territory. And the winner gets to keep all the flowers. That does not seem very fair, Andy. No, it doesn't, Scout. It's always important to share your things. But in nature, wild animals don't always see it like that. Oh, whoa. Oh. 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 Phew, thank goodness that's over. Unfortunately, though, my friend here didn't get any of those tasty flowers. It looks like he's trying again. Plan B. Stealth mode. Ah, the coast is clear. The big bully's gone. The flowers are all yours, my furry friend. <laughs> At last, dinner time. Now, personally, flowers aren't really my thing. He seems to love them. I wonder why. Maybe Jen knows. Andy to Jen. Oh, hi, Andy. Is the hamster doing anything unusual? Well, he's eating some freshly cut flowers that people have left, but... Oh, hang on. Where's he off to? What is he after? Um... Jen, are you seeing this? I am, yes. Are those candles? Yep. And it seems to be eating the wax. 
Don't you ever do that. It's not good for you. Well, that is unusual. Let me investigate. It says here that candle wax is full of oil and high in calories. It's bad for people and for pet hamsters too, but good energy food for wild hamsters like the ones here. Scout, it looks like we've stopped. What's happening up there? The Capuchins have also stopped, Andy. My sensors have detected rife berries in the surrounding foliage. Berries? Hmm, maybe these are the fish we're looking for. But how are they going to get them? Andy, the Capuchins are feeding on the berries. The monkeys are eating the berries? I thought we were here to find out how fish ate them. There must be more to this mystery than we realise. Whoa, did you see that? The fish are eating the berries. These are the ones we're looking for. No sooner had the capuchin not run into the water than the fish darted in and gobbled it up. Scout, patch your feed through to Jen, please. Patching feed. Jen, are you seeing this? I am. It's amazing. So the fish followed the capuchins because they knew they would lead them to the berries. <laughs> How clever! I know! And because capuchins are clearly messy eaters, the Piripatanga just wait in the water below, gobbling up the berries the monkeys drop. <laughs> Hello, little one. Do you mind if I follow you? I'm just heading to that forest over there. Oh. Oh. Be careful, little one. The rocks can be really slippery when the tide goes out. See? Told ya. Oh, look. There's Mum up ahead. What's she up to? Oh, that's why she's brought her cubs here. For a picnic by the seaside. Tasty crabs are on the menu by the looks of it. Oh, she's got a big one there. If I were you two, I'd stick to the little ones. Crabs can give you a nasty nip. Oof. Come on, you two. Play nicely. There's plenty of crabs for everyone. Oh, it says here that during springtime, bears will get nearly all of their food from the beach. When the tide goes out, it leaves lots of sea creatures behind, which is the ideal food for a bear. Oh, you've got a bit of seaweed on your head. Um, no, the um, other side. Um, Use your paw. <laughs> oh, look at this one. Standing on its hind legs. Black bears do that to help them see, hear and smell what's around them. Oh, I wonder what it sniffed out. You can explore more of your favourite CBB shows on BBC iPlayer. This must be the woody vine that Jen was talking about. According to my gizmo, woody vines are common in this area. But it's the soft bit inside called the pith that provides all the nutrients. Oh, it doesn't look very easy to eat, though. Mum seems to be using her teeth to get inside. One thing I do know about baby gorillas is that they learn pretty much everything by watching others, including what they eat and how they eat it. Our youngster looks like he's paying attention, but HQ need confirmation that he can feed for himself. I know, my lunch. Oh, celery. Yummy. Mmm. Come on, little one, look. It's easy. I think this is going to take longer than I thought. Luckily, I've got plenty. <laughs> oh, there's the little pup. And he's found his mum. And I think she's teaching him how to crack open a shellfish. Although rubber's not the best surface to use. You could say he's not quite cracked it yet. Humour detected. Ha, ha, 
There must be quite a lot of food for the otters down there. That might be another reason why they like to come to the marina. My sensors have detected a large quantity of mussels, clams, fish and crabs in the immediate area. Whoa! And golf balls too. Watch out! Sorry, man. Again? Andy, the sea otter pup has collected a foreign object. Correction, two foreign objects. Positive identification, golf balls. Oh, that's not good. Golf balls certainly aren't edible. And plastic when eaten can be harmful. Scout, can you fly over there and encourage the pup to hunt for something more suitable? Affirmative. In progress. Excuse me, sea otter pup. Those balls are not good for your health. Advise against consuming. May I suggest a shellfish like your mother is eating? Far more tasty. Yum, yum. Follow me. Appropriate food source located. Well done, Scout. Look, he's found an oyster. And he's bashing it against the boat just like his mum showed him. Go on, you can do it. Yes! Oh, I'm so glad this youngster can look after himself without having to rely on mum for much longer. Perhaps the wide variety of food and the different objects around here that they can use to crack open the shellfish is the reason why this mum has decided to raise her pup here. I need to tell Jen. Hi, Jen. Hi, Andy. Jen, I think our two otters are going to be absolutely fine. Oh, that's brilliant. They're choosing to be here, probably because there are loads of shellfish and lots of places around here to crack them open. Here's the burrow. I can hear something. Whoa. It's another painted wolf. Well, what's she doing in an aardvark burrow? Oh, she's here with her pups. Female painted wolves often move into empty burrows left behind by other animals because they need a safe place to give birth. Oh, <laughs> careful, little one. Oh, they're tiny. They're only a few weeks old. This might be the first time they've ever come out. Jen, Scout, are you seeing this? Affirmative, Andy. The whole pack of painted wolves is here. This explains why HQ's camera didn't record the aardvark. It's not using this burrow anymore. But where did it go? My scanner isn't picking up any large animal underground, but it's picking up hundreds and thousands of tiny animals in the ground nearby. Hmm. It sounds like an ant or a termite nest. And aardvarks like to eat ants and termites. Yes! Great detective work, gang. Scout. You drop the equipment back at the Explorer and meet me at the nest. Affirmative. See you later, Painted Wolves. I'd love to stay and play, but you're not the animal I'm looking for. Ooh. Oh, it's starting to get really hot now the sun's come up. Better find that nest quick. Jen said it was around here somewhere. Oh, ow! Oh. Well, that's not an aardvark, but it is another animal that likes eating ants. It's a pangolin. They're covered in scales, like a suit of armour. It protects them from predators. And they have long, sticky tongues, perfect for feeding on ants deep beneath the ground. Pangolins <laughs> seem to be quite <laughs> better eaters, though. <laughs> Do you love sea babies? Well, you can learn, sing, and explore with all your favourite sea babies friends, like Number Blocks, Mr. Tumble, Bluey, Jojo, and Grand Grand, and so much more. Why not ask your grown up to download the BBC iPlayer app, where you can watch all your favourite sea babies friends anytime, any way you like?